This is the most beautiful dystopia. Hunger Games meets Mad Men. Hey everybody, and welcome to another movie night. I'm Jackie. And today we are starting a new series. We are starting Fallout. Now, I know very little about this. I actually haven't even watched any trailers because I wanted to go into this as blind as physically possible. All I know is that this is based on a game. I also know that it's a post-apocalyptic show and so there's definitely some sci-fi elements to it. This definitely feels like it's following in that wave of The Last of Us and other video game adaptations. This definitely sort of fits that theme. And considering how much I loved The Last of Us, I am really looking forward to this. I've heard great things about it so far. I've been avoiding spoilers. I've been avoiding reviews. So. I'm going to get through this as quickly as I possibly can. And again, I am going in completely blind. I am not a gamer. I know nothing about this. So I'm really excited to just experience this from scratch. I am a completely clean slate. So on that note, we're going to get into this. But as always, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode, on this series, and of course on the original game. I love hearing your guys' thoughts when it comes to these adaptations because I know nothing about them. I don't know if and when I will go back and play the game, so going to try to avoid any sort of spoilers on that front, but I am always excited to hear your guys' thoughts. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser, and check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction, as well as all of my other content. Links to my Instagram and other socials are in the description box below. With all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate all of you, and let's get into Fallout Episode 1. Ah! <laughs> this feels like an ending title card, that's funny. Hello, Walton Goggins! I think I maybe vaguely knew that he was in this? I have a very bad feeling about this. The lyrics to the songs they use are always significant. This morning in Anchorage, Alaska. The specter of nuclear war facing... This is very 1950s. Is this actually the 1950s? Okay. Cold War. It's the party. Let's just focus on the party. Okay? <laughs> Let's not worry about the threat of impending nuclear war. Bam. Oh, that is so ominous. <laughs> oh, Nat King Cole, you're killing us right now. All right, you ready? Oh, dear. Flash. Good. <laughs> Good. Here we, we go. Got camera flash. Now we need Bam and Alakazam. Oh, coop, coop, coop. Do your thumbs up. Oh God. Yeah, you know, given the state of everything, I prefer not to if that's all right. Huh? Why not? That's what you're famous for. Drop yeah. it, Bob. Is he a stuntman, movie star? Happy birthday, dear boy. So many flashes. Happy birthday, all I can think is like nuclear flash. <laughs> Ooh, that slow cut into the cake. Oh, they are building some very bright, colorful tension right now. I can't do the weather if I don't even know if there's going to be a next week. Only happy thoughts I'm not today. Sure the I can't do the weather if I don't even know if there's going to be a next week. Oh my god. This is the most tense, upbeat birthday party I've ever seen. Why wouldn't you do it? The thumbs up. That's grown up stuff. Hmm. No kid likes to hear that. If they ever drop a really big bomb, told us to hold up your thumb just like this. And if the cloud is smaller than your thumb, now you run for the hills. And if it's bigger than your thumb? You gon' die. They told us not to bother running. Yeah. Oh, oh. Do you think oh. it's gonna happen? Apparently everybody else does. Can I have a slice, Dad? No, let me see if I can't muscle you up in peace. <laughs> Aw, don't give me a dad with a cute daughter again. Don't give me those Joel and Sarah vibes. Stop with the flashes! Stop with the flashes! Flash! Flash! What did I fucking say? What did I fucking say? Oh, it's dead silent. <gasps> All right, one piece of cake coming up. Is it your thumb yeah. or mine? Flash, bam, Alakazam. That's smoke, Janie. It's just a fire. Uh, no, it's not. Holy mother forking shirt balls. <gasps> oh my god, what a shot. What a colorful, 
horrifying shot. Oh my god. What do we say about ticking? Fallout shelters. Fallout shelters! Fallout. Yep, that, that name, that makes sense. Oh, shit, this is how you find out who your friends are. Oh, this music. Oh, the sound design. Oh, it's so colorful and so terrifying. Oh my god, the contrast. The visual contrast. This is incredible. Oh my god. Oh shit, there's third one. Fourth one. Cut. Oh, that is some masterful tension. That is some masterful horror suspense done to a beautiful 1950s colorful background. Oh my God, the incongruity was gorgeous. 219 years? My name is Lucy McLean, and I'm an active contributor to the well-being of my community. What the fuck is this? What in the propaganda? My primary passion is teaching American history with a focus on ethics. Gymnastics club, fencing team C, intermediate phys ed, I dabble in riflery. Okay, the fact that the apocalypse happened in the 1950s is such a fascinating commentary on where society winds up. I'm participating in my family book club. We're still trying to get my brother on board. He'll come around when he's ready. Moises Arias, hello! Rico! My reproductive organs are intact, yet I have been unable to find a suitable marriage partner. At least, one I'm not related to. What in the 1950s? Oh my god, they have, like, space watches but limited to the 1950s. That's all? Oh, this is so interesting! This is so cool! This is the most... Beautiful dystopia. Hunger Games meets Mad Men. Oh my god. That is such a cool way to show how finite resources are. After 10 years of cousin stuff, I'm definitely excited for the real thing. Cousin stuff? Oh, Lucy. I am just excited for us to raise our kids together. <laughs> Break glass, break glass, break glass. That glass is getting broken. That glass is getting broken at some point. Very soon. Huh. Well, this is idyllic. And something tells me, just like the 50s and 60s, not as perfect as it looks. Yes! What did I fucking say? This is so fast. Yeah, no. This is all fake. This is... Oh my god. This world building is incredible. Are they underground? Are they fully underground? Is it like a nuclear wasteland up there? Were you scared? When you married Mom? Me? <laughs> yes. Terrified. Yeah. <laughs> when did it go away? The moment I met your mother. Mm. That's sweet. What happened to her? Dear God. Dear God, what happened to her? Overseer? It's time. Overseer. There is so much fabulous, smooth, incredible world building happening right now. Oh my god, this is like the Wizard of Oz. That just that that going through the corn like I don't know why this made me think of the Wizard of Oz. Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. The textbook Tumblr Jam. It's gonna take some time to fix until maintenance and I can- Chet, what's going on? Are you stalling, Chet? Lucy, I love you. Aww. We all know that, Chet. Oh, God. Messing around with your cousin, it's all well and good for kids, but it's not a sustainable long-term sexual practice, you know? My God. What the fuck? It's like we're 10 minutes in and I'm obsessed with this already. This is incredible. A lot of symmetry in the tunnels. Lee Moldaver, overseer of 32. Oh my god, two Sex and the City veterans. In exchange, we offer you a breeder. 
So. <laughs> oh my god. Who am I marrying? <laughs> yep, this is what happens if you drop a nuclear bomb on Mad Men. I'm Lucy. Do you have a name? Oh, hello. Monty. Lucky. <laughs> I was gonna say, could have done worse. What's wrong with him? We are bonded, not just as neighbors, but by a shared duty huh? to keep the candle of civilization lit mm -hmm. while the rest of the world has been cast into darkness. Hmm. If our measurements are correct, Lucy and Monty's children will be able to recolonize. <laughs> this feels like such American exceptionalism propaganda. Well, after 200 years, we don't know much about what's up there. Hmm. Desperation, violence. Mm. But then I look at my daughter, and such a beautiful bride. Was she Alita? Oh God, this is like comedic horror. It's not even horror comedy. It is comedic horror. It's 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 like some sort of incongruous, brightly colored horror hellscape. Oh, this is this is this is gonna this is gonna get so bad. This is gonna get so messy. I am obsessed. Oh, isn't it great? Every big moment of our lives is gonna happen. Oh God, right here. I don't like him. I'm 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 terrified for him. I don't I I don't I don't trust him for a second. Nope. I asked what the f is wrong with him. Oh. Huh. Okie dokie. Okay. The music choice is astounding. Wow, she didn't even bother taking the dress off. She is tired of fucking her cousin, apparently. Okay. What's got you so tense, Rico? Rico Norman. The symmetry in these shots is so unnerving. Is this what they were talking about? Their wheat stores got knocked out? What do you know, Rico? There's so much incongruity here. Yeah, the fact that this song is playing, we're so in love, I'm so nervous, but something's wrong. Something is so wrong here. Oh, this is lipstick on a pig. Th this whole 1950s idyllic thing they got going, it is lipstick on a pig, what? So many horror huh? vibes. So much horror. So much horror. What the? Yeah, what are all the scars, by the way? I was wondering that. Radiation. Geiger counter? Yeah. You're from the surface. on domestic violence at the time is really fascinating, but I'm also going to comment on the sound design and have to- oh, You psycho. Just so you know, this was the best day of my life. Oh, fuck you. Atta girl! That's the battle angel I know you are. Oh. She stab him? Did she get him? I heard the stabby sound. <gasps> nice! Oh. Effective. And hilarious use of a woman wearing a 1950s dress using housework to beat her attacker. I appreciate that. I said the glass would get broken in case of emergency. That was some terrifying foreshadowing. Yeah, hold on to that. Oh, poor upgrade. What a visual. Oh my god. Oh my god. Murder people with one hand and eat cake with the other? So much shit did he make? <laughs> Oh, you may see a stranger, or, or a couple, you know. 
A few. Oh, that's so Joker cut. Oh my god. That made me think of like the got milk mustache. <laughs> what in the boys? It's like the opening scene all over again with the nuclear blast in the background, but it's just the electronics falling apart. Into the fallout shelter. Oh my god, just deeper and deeper. It's layer after layer. <gasps> Yes, Dad! Yes! Protect your baby girl! I support that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go ape shit. Go ham on him. boy, Trey McDougal. The pacing of this is spectacular. I think I know who you are. Everyone knows who I am. I don't. So I'm gonna offer you a choice. Or the illusion of a choice. Them or her. Oh, fuck. Dad, please. We have to help us stop. You are my world. Uh. You look like your mother. Oh, fuck, that's creepy. Where are you taking him? To the real world. You should see it sometime. Maybe you should do what you do best. Ah! Run and hide. Fuck! My word for this episode is incongruity. Is that a word? Incongruous. Incongruity is a word, right? Contrast. This is so fascinating! Where, when, was this actually upstairs? It is the duty of the Brotherhood of Steel to secure the wasteland. Okay, the wasteland, so I'm guessing this is actually above ground. What's going on? The both of us were chosen to get anointed. Anointed? Hey, what's your title gonna be? Squire. Tonight, Titus. And get this, we're going to the wild. Hell yeah! You are. <laughs> Deep. Aww, feels left behind. The wild. They're doing really smooth exposition here. is one way to let out your frustration. Ah! Jesus! Ah! 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 Someone put poison- ah! Holy sh- They're very creative. Wait, is he getting- What just happened? What just happened? What is happening? This crazy up and down. <gasps> what the fuck? Compost. Oh. Oh. Okay, we're back to, oh God, I don't need to, I respect the hell out of that, but oh Lord. Troubles, what? The choice for the- the music choices. Just the music choices. These songs that just sound so sweet when you put them in this context. I have a proposal for the assembly. We send a search party to the surface to find my dad. Aww. Lucy, but you're talking about opening the outer vault door? Just for under a minute. We're brainstorming here and there's no bad ideas in a brainstorm, Maybe but- you. Don't bring an umbrella to a brainstorm. We're all hurting right now. But our first priority has to be to maintain the security of this vault. That means not opening any of our doors. Well, how did they get in? If you didn't open the vault doors, how did the raiders get in? Let's move on. They don't want to find Dad. If they did, they wouldn't get to be in charge. Yeah. Smart Rico. Norman.
thumbs up, the thumb, the recurrent, the, the, the thumbs, oh, that is such a beautiful recurring visual. Oh, someone's got an idea. Don't lose. It's encouraging her. I'm bringing him home. I think you're gonna find him, but I don't think he's gonna come home. That's my prediction. Son. Natural light for the first time in her life, I imagine. Oh, the silence. Oh! I like the vague sounds of a Geiger counter. Oh my god, the Santa Monica Pier. The only time there's ever not traffic in Santa Monica. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, she says. Oh my god, that was the description for the episode. Wait, no, well, hold it, hold on that longer. I wanted to see more. We expect you to give us the truth. Why did you join the Brotherhood? To hurt the people who hurt me? That sounds honest. I understand you're a friend of Aspirant Dane. You're aware of their injury? Yes. Do you know who did it? Mm? No. That was a suspiciously long pause. Your fellow Aspirants say it was you. That's terrifying. Intimidating. Speak. I, I didn't, I didn't do it. I did not. I, 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 I wanted it to happen. Is that wrong? Yes. Just because you wanted it to happen doesn't mean you did it, though. Violence is merely a tool. We use it to bring order to the wasteland, but... Order to the wasteland, that sounds like an oxymoron. Violence against a brother of steel it's a sign of weakness. God, just the ominous pacing. Do you have anything else to say in your defense? Innocent until proven guilty? I, I want to thank you for your guidance and for giving me a home. Aww. If I can help, the Brotherhood make it better? Eden, or whatever. Even if it means giving my own life, I'll do it. And I'd be grateful to the Brotherhood for giving my life meaning. Is he calling your bluff? Good boy. You challenging the Brotherhood? Yeah. He passed the test. And you will be Knight Titus. Yup, he passed the squire. test. Yup. Shit. Congratulations, boo. It's not so bad. At least here no one steals your rations. <laughs> they said I'll still have a place at the Brotherhood. I heard you got my spot. Mm. You know who did it? Well, I've narrowed it down to any one of those assholes. <laughs> they asked if it was you. Yeah, they asked me the same thing. Mm. I told him you wouldn't hurt a fly. That's interesting, because we've seen a lot of flies buzzing about, and he's never once even swatted them away. Intriguing music playing. <laughs> I was literally about to say, interesting. Aspirin Maximus. This is very Brotherhood culty, almost. It is your most sacred duty to protect the mission. Mission, yeah. Even the music, the sound is very monastic. Post-apocalyptic medieval. Post apocalyptic nights, and that's so interesting. Ah. They make a sound. This world is so interesting. And the denizen of the Enclave has escaped. The Enclave's real. And that he has with him an object of profound potential to harm our nation. Hmm. Or to save it. Hmm. Nobody 
hurt the dog. Armor. Knights in shining armor. I love the visual design and the entire production design of this. Because they don't- they look simultaneously old and futuristic at the same time. Again, they're taking technology that existed in the 50s and 60s, and that's the limitation. Ooh, castle. Fort. Saloon. Oh my god, we're getting so many different <laughs> cultures represented. Oh! <gasps> what the f- I don't know which grave. Well, Slim, we look for the freshman. Helpful. Don Pedro has our friend dug up once a year, cuts some pieces off, and puts him right back in the ground. What? You're telling me this supreme badass we're looking for is a godforsaken mutant? Hell, some respect. Don, you said you knew this guy. I said I knew of him. Huh. <laughs> Pop worked with him once. Your pop. How long has this asshole been moldering in the ground? How do we 219 know? years, Walton Goggins? We brought <laughs> our little friend. What? A feral goon can't abide a chicken. Oh my god. If he goes for him, we kill him. The wives' tales and mythology. Oh god, this is so interesting. Is this Walton Goggins? I'm betting this is Walton Goggins because we haven't seen him since the opening scene. And he is too big a name to only be in an opening scene. Uh... The shadows. It's like horror comedy. Horror, but horror comedy. Huh? <gasps> 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 Walton Goggins. It's him. It's him! Bits and pieces of him. It's the guy with his nose gone. Yup. Yup. Is that him? Yeah, I'm betting. Well, well, well. Why, this is an Amish production of the Count of Monte Cristo. Huh? This is the weirdest circle jerk I've ever been invited to. God. Welcome back. Huh. Now you don't even know us. No, I do not. <laughs> Does that count? Should I shoot him? Uh-uh. We got a proposition for you. A bounty came down. Yeah, now somebody made a run. Hmm. From the Enclave. Oh, that's familiar. It ain't where they's running from. I figured you'd be interested in. It's where they's running to. Dead mm. witch. Moldy. Was that the woman who blew up the, the fallout shelter? Because California. We established that that's where Lucy is. Well, I tell you what, boys. Whenever somebody says they doing one last job, that usually means their heart's not in it. Hmm. Probably never was. Yeah, because someone who truly loves it can't give it up. But for me, I do this shit for the love of the game. Yup. <laughs> I was gonna say after he's like, should I shoot him? I said, you can try. Oh my god, I got such Deadpool vibes. The ghoul. That's appropriate. So much Deadpool. Well, you right, friend, about one thing. This right here was your last job. <laughs> Us cowpokes. <laughs> we take it as it comes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Nolan and Joy, that's right. That's right. I forgot this was Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy. I have so many things to say. That was incredible. Oh my god, I have heard good things about this. 
Again, I had no idea what to expect. None whatsoever. I haven't watched a single trailer. I've seen little images and posters and things like that. So I knew about, I didn't know it was Walton Goggins, but I knew about the ghoul. I think I'd seen one or two actors from this, but I didn't know any specifics. I really didn't know any specifics. I didn't know any style points. I had no idea what this would be. And I now that I saw the credits do remember that this is Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy who did Westworld, which started out spectacular. I stand by that the first season of Westworld is flawless. And I'm heartbroken still that we didn't get a final season. They were supposed to wrap after their final season and they got canceled before that happens, which is really sad because I would have at least liked to see it end. That being said, this really does prove that those two know what they're doing. And they have a bit of a, I don't want to say a typecast, but a style and the sort of incongruity in these two series between Westworld and Fallout are very stylistically similar in that you have contrast. Westworld is literally about the future, but enjoying this Western style past. It's those two completely different styles and points in time and genres almost coming together. It's Western and sci-fi coming together and that's hard to do. Actually doing Firefly right now and one thing I've really been enjoying about that series is the way that they play with the genre. Obviously it's cowboys in space so that in itself is genre bending but there are so many episodes that are styled after very specific genres and it's fun to watch but it's very very hard to do. And so something like this that plays with tone so much is so hard to execute. I cannot sing the praises for this enough because it's one thing to have this idea that you want to do something in Congress and you want to do something stylized and you want to do something full of contrast and intrigue, but to actually execute it and to execute it flawlessly is so hard and this did it. I, I, I'm still reeling over this. This is genuinely, I have been, I, I think I just said this as I was watching Shogun recently. I have been so blessed to get to watch such incredible things. I, I started with Die Hard on this channel and then literally just went right into The Last of Us. And I feel like since then I have been so blessed to just be able to watch incredible, incredible things. And I have heard, I haven't read spoilers, I haven't read actual reviews, but I've heard this whole season is great. And if this episode is any indication, I am going to love this so much. Oh my God. All right, let me let me see if I can actually break down a couple specifics because I was trying to, to comment on technical stuff as I was going, but I was just, my mind was exploding. Okay, so that opening sequence was spectacular. I keep coming back to this word incongruity and that's what makes it so fun if you can make that work. The building tension and suspense and the fear and the horror of an atomic bomb and literally multiple atomic bombs going off in Los Angeles with the backdrop of this perfect idyllic 1950s, 1960s Mad Men aesthetic. And I say Mad Men not just because it's an iconic piece of cinema, but it's literally about advertising and creating this perfect idyllic world. And so this is literally Mad Men meets Oppenheimer. <laughs> but to have those two together, to have this perfect picturesque 1950s ideal with bombs going off in the world being destroyed. And then the same thing when you actually get into the fallout shelter 200 years later. She's wearing this 1950s style wedding dress. You have this music playing, just this perfect housewife ideal in a bomb shelter, in a literal underground fallout shelter after the apocalypse. Just the, the contrast of that is just so great. And the very prominent break glass in case of emergency in the background. I think that was just a bit of visual foreshadowing because we didn't actually see that happen. I think that was just a bit of visual foreshadowing for the chaos that was about to come. But that was fascinating. I'm really curious to see what happens with Maximus because that was something that I didn't really know what to make of. He's a really interesting, intriguing, unknown. He's an unknown element. I have no idea what to think with him. And 
I'm really curious to see where it goes, but I think this executed a first episode really well and that we established the world. The world building was great. We had no clunky exposition. There was no point where I'm sitting here going like, okay, thank you for explaining that. We just watched it happen. They just walked us through this world and using the music so effectively and the visuals and the technology and what they have establishing what the limitations are was excellent. I know I've been talking constantly, but I feel like I have no words. Like, I feel like there are no words for how good this was and how spectacular this was. And then we get to the end and we find a common goal. I, I didn't recognize the person in the drawing, but we now have people heading for California. We now have two different groups or two different people. We have the Knights, the Brotherhood, and the Ghoul that are now heading for the same person in California where Lucy is. And we also have, I need to look up the actress's name. I keep wanting to say Seema because that's her character's name in Sex and the City or the reboot of Sex and the City. We've set up several different pieces, but we've also established very smoothly that they're all going to meet. We knew they were all going to meet, but we've established the where and the how. And so now we have to get there. And I can't, I can't wait. I literally can't wait. I'm watching the next one right after this. And I have a feeling I will be rearranging my schedule so I can binge this because this is just so damn good. Oh my god. Okay. Is there anything else I needed to talk about? Oh, I mentioned pacing. The pacing of this was so effortless. There was so much that they packed in, but the way that they built these crescendos and the way that it would get so intense and so fast and then we would drop and then it would pick up and they had these extended sequences of slow motion. I kept thinking when her dad was killing her husband. <laughs> oh, she got out of that marriage quick and easy. But that whole extended scene, the flow of the pacing in this, that's another thing that is just so hard to execute that well of these ups and downs, highs and lows of building tension and releasing it and then picking up at another spot. And so by having this insane opening and then the entire sequence it was so high energy, it was so intense and then to drop down and have this much slower paced, lower intensity, even lower saturation. The sort of above ground scenes with Maximus were much less colorful, were a lot more mundane. And I believe, again, this is above ground, so that makes sense. It's in contrast with this sort of 50s ideal. But we had this build, 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 and then it dropped and then we had a, a lower pace, but it picked up and it just, it was waves. They were flawless, perfect waves of pacing. And actually, I'm really curious what the game was like, because obviously this has been getting really good reception. So I'm assuming this is faithful to at least a, a certain degree. But now having seen this, I'm so curious what the game is like. I'm not a gamer at all. I really, really am not. I've been curious to go back and watch footage from The Last of Us games now that I've seen the show, but I've never been a gamer. So I know nothing about this. I didn't even know this was based on a game until recently. So I'm really curious to know how this translates. Is this a direct, we're following the actual storyline of the game? Or does it just take place in that world? Is the universe of the game the same stylized incongruous tone? I'm really, really curious. I'd really love to know. So please let me know. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. If I think of anything else, I will add it in later. But my mind is blown right now and I'm happy. I am just so happy. I love my job. I love my job so much. I love, I love that this is my job. I love that this is what I get to do. All right. On that note, I'm going to leave it there. But please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode and this series. And of course, the game. I love reading your guys' comments and would really, really appreciate hearing a little bit more about this franchise. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser, and check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction, as well as all of my other content. Links to my Instagram and other socials are in the description box below. With all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you on the next one.